Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'll be showing you how to build a fun snake game using Python and Pygame. And I'll walk you through the code line by line so you understand how everything works. So without any further ado, let's get started. We're going to start off by installing the Pygame module. So in your terminal, type pip install Pygame and hit enter. You should have it in no time. Once that's installed, we're going to import it into our Python script. We'll also be importing random, so Pygame will handle the graphics and game loop, and then random will randomly place our food onto the screen. Next, we're going to say pygame init. This will initialize the pygame modules we'll be using. We'll have the width and height as 600 by 400. This will be the size of our game window. We're going to have our block size as 20, which will be the size of the snake and the food. And then the FPS, we're going to set it to 10 because the game doesn't need a higher frame rate. Next, we'll create a variable called win. And in this variable, we're going to tell pygame to display the windows from the variable width and height we created earlier. We're also going to have a caption at the top of our window and I'll set it as snake game. That's the text at the top of our game window. Then we're going to have a variable called clock and I'll set this variable to pygame time clock. This creates a clock object that helps control how fast the game runs, specifically how many frames per second is being displayed. That line pauses the loop just enough to make sure that the game runs at the speed of 10 frames per second. Without this, the game would run as fast as your computer allows it, making it nearly impossible to play. Then when I have a variable called font, and I'll set it to system font with a size of 35. This will be the font that we'll use to tell the user if the game is over. Next, we're going to define a function, and we're going to call it draw snake. And we're going to give this function one parameter, snake. Then we're going to say for x, y in snake, pi game draw rectangle win 0, 2, 2, 5, 0, x, y block, size, block, size. So the x, y are going to be the coordinates of the snake. It'll help this function identify the snake. Then win is the window surface, aka your game screen, where the rectangle will be drawn. 0, 2, 2, 5, 0 is the RGB color, in this case, bright green. XY block size block size defines a rectangle at position XY with the width and height equal to block size. Next, we're going to define another function and we're going to call it message. And this time, we're going to have two parameters, text and color. In this function, we're going to have a variable called msg and we're going to set it to font render text color. This renders the text onto a surface using the font object. Font is defined earlier using pygame.font, which creates a font object with size 35. Dot render creates a surface image of the text. Text is the string you want to display, basically the text you want to display. True enables smoother edges and color, of course, the color of the text. MSG with 6 and height. This draws the text surface onto the game window at a specific position. Width 6 places the text horizontally at 1 sixth of the window's width and height 3 places the text vertically 1 third of the window's height. This position centers the message nicely on the screen, roughly in the upper and middle area. Next, we'll define another function called game loop. In this function, we're going to have variables called x and y. And I'll set them to width 2 and height 2. Then we're going to have dx and dy variables, and I'm going to set them to 0, 0. Then we're going to have a variable called snake, and I'll set it to a tuple. I'm going to set it to x and y, and then one more variable called length, and I'm set it to 1. So here's what's going on. This defines the main function that runs the entire game. All the logic, movement, drawing, collusion input is handled inside this loop. The variables x and y set the starting position of the snake on the screen. Width and height are the size of the game window. 2 centers the snake on the screen, both horizontally and vertically. So x and y are coordinates of the snake's head. dx and dy variables control the direction of the snake's movement. dx changes in the horizontal movement, dy changes in the vertical movement. The variable snake creates a snake body as a list of coordinate tuples. Each tuple x and y represents a block of the snake. Initially, the snake only has one block, the head. As the game progresses, the snake will eat food and then new blocks will be added onto this list. Length 1 sets the initial length of the snake as 1. And as the snake eats the food, length will increase more and more xy positions will be added to the snake to make the list grow. Next, we have a variable called food and I'll set it to this. I'll explain what this does just now. Then we're going to have another variable called run and I'll set it to true and one more called game over and I'll set that one to false. So this line food randomly places the food onto the game screen. Random.randrange start stop step generates a random number between start and stop, incrementing the step width. Width and height are the dimensions of the screen. Block size is the size of one square, usually 20 pixels, which is the size of both the snake and the food. The reason we use block size as the step is to ensure that the food aligns perfectly with the grid so that the snake can eat the food without any issues. The run equals true flag controls the main game loop. As long as run is true, the game continues running. When it's set to false, the loop exits and the game ends. 
the game over false flag tracks if the game is over, like if you hit a wall or you hit yourself, while false if the game is active. If the snake crashes, it will be set to true and a game over message can be displayed before quitting and restarting. Now when I say while well run, this is gonna be the main loop of our game. In here we're gonna say for event in pygame event get if event type equals pygame run equals false. Otherwise event type equals pygame key down if event equals pygame k left dx and dy equals negative block size zero. Otherwise event key equals pygame k right dx and dy equals block size zero. Otherwise event key equals pygame k up dx and dy equals zero and negative block size. Elif event key equals pygame k down, dx and dy equals zero and block size. Now let me explain what we just added. This is the main game loop. It keeps running as long as run is true. Every frame, every tick, the code inside the loop will execute. For event in pygame event.get, this line gets all the events from pygame's event queue, like key presses, window closing, etc, etc. It loops through each and every event that has happened since the last frame. If event equals pygame quit, this checks if the player has tried closing the game window by clicking, for example, the X button. If so, it sets run to false, which will break the game loop and end the game. Elif event type equals pygame key down. This checks if a key was pressed down. If so, it checks which arrow key was pressed and updates the snake's movement's direction. For these game controls, dx is the change in the x direction, left or right, dy is the change in the y direction, up or down. By updating dx and dy, the snake will move in that direction during the next frame. Then we're going to say if game over x plus equals dx and y plus equals dy, snake append x and y if the length of the snake is greater than length delete snake zero. So what's going on over here is if not game over, this checks whether the game is still in progress. If game over is false, the snake continues to move. If the game is over, for example, the snake crashes into itself or the wall, this part is skipped. x equals dx, y equals dy. These lines update the snake's head position based on the direction set by the arrow keys. dx and dy were updated earlier when the key was pressed dx equals block size and dy equals zero. So x position increases and y stays the same. That's how the snake moves on the screen. Snake append at the new head position after moving at the end of the snake list. The snake list stores all positions of the snake's body as part of x and y coordinates. The last element of the list is the head of the snake. If length snake is greater length delete snake zero, this ensures that the snake stays at its current length unless it eats food. If the snake's list of body parts is longer than its allowed length, the first item, the tail, is deleted. This creates the illusion of the snake moving forward. If you add a new head position append, you move the tail position, delete snake. Now the next part is going to check for collisions. If x is less than 0, or x is greater or equal to the width, or y is less than 0, or y is greater or equal to the height, or length of snake is not equal to length set snake, game over equals true. Over here, we're checking for collisions. If the snake hits the wall or itself, the game is over. We are then going to have a variable called food. We're setting it to random rand range zero with block size random rand range zero height block size length plus equals one. So if the snake eats the food, we generate a new food location and increase the snake's length. Next, we are drawing to the screen. We're going to say win fill zero 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 pi game draw rectangle. 225 0 and 0. Full block size, block size draw snake snake. Pi game display update clock tick FPS. So this wind fill fills the entire game window with black. The color 000 is the RGB for black. It also clears the previous frame so don't get trails or overlapping visuals. Pi game draw rectangle win. 22500 0, 0, food block size. Pi game draw rectangle. This line draws the food onto the screen. 22500 is the RGB for red. Food unpacks the tuple X and Y position of the food. Block size sets the width and height of the red square. This line places the red block, the food, at the correct position. Draw snake calls the custom function draw snake to draw each block of the snake onto the screen. It loops through the snake list and draws the green rectangles at each position. Pygame.display update. This tells Pygame to refresh the screen so that all the newly drawn elements like the background, the food, the snake are shown. Without this, you won't be able to see the changes from this frame. Clock tick FPS controls the frame rate of the game. FPS stands for frames per second. This ensures that the game runs at a consistent speed. 
regardless of how fast your computer is. Without it, your game might run way too fast or inconsistently. Otherwise, fail 000, message game, press R to restart or Q to quit, 225, 225, 225. Pi game display update for even in Pi game event get. If event type equals Pi game key down, if event key equals Pi game K, Q run equals false. If event equals Pi game K, our game loop. So when fail 00, zero clears the screen with a black background, just like the normal gameplay, and prepares the window for the game over message. Message calls your custom message function to display white text on the screen. The text tells the player how to restart or quit. 225, 225, 225 is the RGB for white, meaning that our text will be in the white color. Pygame display update refreshes the display so that the game over message actually shows up. For event in Pygame event.get starts an event loop to wait for player input. This loop is only listening for key presses, for example, R or Q. For event equals Pygame key down, checks if a key was pressed. If event key equals Pygame Q, so if the user presses Q, the game loop ends, run equals false, and the game window will close. If event key equals pi game key R, if the user presses R, the game restarts by calling the game loop again. This reinitializes everything from the beginnings, the snake position, the food, the score, etc. etc. Then we're gonna say pi game dot quit. Once the game ends, we call pi game dot quit to clean up and close the window. And we also add the game loop. Finally, we call the function to start the game. And when you run the program, you have yourself a working snake game. And that's it for this one. If you enjoyed or found this video helpful in any way, shape, or form, then consider leaving a like and subscribing. Turn post notifications to be the first to know when I upload a new video. Also, if you have any constructive criticism or any questions or you just want to say hi, then leave it in the comment section below. And until next time, thanks for watching. Peace.